Hindi na ganyan ako. Ano, hindi ko makita. Alam mo, tanaw na dula ako. Nakaspat. Ay, pa once kay ano niya, sir. Ang ano. Okay. Kita ano ko, ha? Then, din ay mute ko gani, ha? Tak awak mana kami mutan? Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. This is going to be uh, another exciting two-day presentation and research, of course. So we're going to have a first opening prayer, followed by our Philippine National Anthem, before we present our speakers for today. Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Loving this is going God, to be uh, another we offer salutations and respect to all present presentation in this and virtual talk course, so we're going to have a first and all who will be part of it. Followed by we brush off the chair we present we our speakers to make for clear today. space for a building of minds. We brush off from our clothing and it debris Good morning, to everyone. Happy Saturday. on the day. way to clear our minds. Be, uh, another we offer salutations and respect. We wipe the blood from our virtual jobs so we have a knowledge and a part of it. For any brush off, we have reflected. We, have reflected. we wipe the tears from our eyes to acknowledge and forgive any hurt we have received. We take the lump out of our throats to let go of any sadness or disappointment. 
we take the tightness out of our chest to let go of any fear or resentment. We acknowledge and pray for guidance to the great creator spirit of all life. In closing, bless our families, friends, and co-workers, participants with the gifts of kindness, patience, love, and respect. Give us the grace to share these gifts. Empower us to enjoy year 2021, whether at work or on vacation, before welcoming the students back at the end of February, as you lead all of us through a successful academic year. Lord, we bring before you these prayers and the prayers that we hold silently in our hearts. We ask all of this in God's name. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pampansang awit ng Pilipinas. Once again, good afternoon, or rather, good morning. It's a Saturday. Welcome to the virtual talk series presented to you, of course, by the International Organization of Researchers, Inventors, and Extensionalists. We're going to have the topic, 21st Century Tourism Reflections of 2021. And we've invited international speakers. We're going to enlighten them all about tourism industry. But let's start the day with the opening remarks from the URI Vice President for Internal Affairs, Dr. Gabriel C. Deliarte. A dear keynote speaker, the honorable lecturers and speakers from Oman Tourism College. As you will know, Oman Tourism College is a cultural exchange with West Visayas State University, Laguna Pantos. I was campus administrator there about three years ago. The very debonair and innovative Dr. Romy B. Moralista, President and Chairman of the Board of IRA Learning and Development Center, as well as the overall chair of this webinar, other key officials and staff of IRA, enthusiastic webinarians, Ladies and gentlemen, warm greetings from the city of love and the home of Ginagyang, the Iloilo city. Indeed, it is a beautiful world and it is a wonderful experience traveling around the world for sightseeing, employment, and for business. Today, we invited very competent speakers about 21st Century Tourism Reflections of 2021. They were invited to share their expertise to everyone as a vision of the IRA. Thanks to the innovative spirit of the seasoned and prolific researcher, Dr. Romy B. Moralista, 
Vice President for Research Extension and Training of Guimara State College, the officers and staff of IRA who did their best in order to materialize this reality. We should be grateful about this and may the domino effect will not end here. Our year of our Lord 2021 is a very challenging year for all of us, including the tourism industry. The pandemic has brought us lockdowns, travel restrictions, and quarantines. We need to listen to experts on how to do about these problems, and we are so grateful to our speakers, Dr. Don Anton Baliga, Dr. Jihad Al Harazi, and Dr. Bianca Zulamis. They will be properly introduced soon. We are also grateful to the Lord for the people behind this, Dr. Moralista, Dr. Joey De La Cruz, VP for IRA, and our other brilliant invited speakers and presenters. I hope they serve as your challenge and inspiration. To the speakers, we give our commendation and to all the webinarians, may you learn. You learn from, keep, and implement these lectures for the development of your offices, homes, workplaces, and communities. So enjoy, learn, stay safe, and reap the fruit of your labors. May we survive this pandemic and Godspeed to all of us. Thank you very much again to our Vice President for Internal Affairs of International Organization of Research Extensionalists and of course Inventors. Thank you, Dr. Gabriel C. de la Liate. Now, one of the most beautiful places that we can probably visit in the Philippines is of course the beautiful island of Guimaras. Take a look at this beautiful island. Here it is. The island of Guimaras, a rural tourism destination for every family. Renowned throughout the world for its sweet mangoes, it offers home and all the sweetness of being part of it. With its strategic location in between Negros and Panay Island, you can easily reach Guimaras through sea and sky. Get a more relaxed ambience with its green environment and be home to the true Filipino culture. Experience the life at the farm and the secrets of traditional living and take part in protecting the unspoiled beauty of nature through the Agri-Eco Tours. Go on adventure in foot or on bike in the trails of the hills and forests and enjoy the thrills with everyone. Then, take a leap into the clear waters and witness the world underneath. Discover the mangrove sanctuaries rooted along the streams and rivers that run deep within the land. Take a tour in the hidden caverns and rock formations aesthetically landscaped along the islands. 
And at the end of the day, take a bite of the region's special cuisine and savor the sweetest of its mangoes. Relax at the homes of the communities or at the various resorts that offer quality services and amenities. Learn more about the Gimarasnan history and values with its historical places and practices. Amuse in the traditional arts that were handed down from generations, such as the novelty of the galleon boats, where the local boat makers highlight the province's vital role in the economy of the past, in trade, and as the masters in building ships. Observe the heart of the island's economy, where the families in every community value perseverance, discipline, and tradition. See how salt is made alongside the farmers that produce them. How the mothers neatly weave the buri leaf to intricately make handbags and other products. Buy some freshly caught fish from the fishermen who went offshore before the sunrise. And complete your experience by first-hand harvesting sweet mangoes only grown in the island. Mangoes are more than just fruits. It became the symbol of what Guimaras is and what it could become. Take a trip back in time for the sweetest gathering that highlights the pride of the nation. Celebrate the bounty of good harvest with the Gimaras nuns during Mangahan Festival and be part of our family. This is our island, your home. There are guys who have seen the beautiful island of Guimaras. It's really a, a must visit place. So if you get time, try to go visit the beautiful island of Guimaras and explore how beautiful it is. Now it's time to um, have our first speaker present a very uh, great topic, which is going to be all about travel and tourism management from Omen Tourism College. Here is our first speaker who's going to enlighten all of us, Dr. Bianca Zalomis. Hello, everyone. My name is Bianca, and I'm a lecturer from Oman Tourism College. Today, I'm going to present to you the Sultanate of Oman, which has also been known to be called a hidden gem. And today I'm going to give you a little bit more insight into this amazing emerging tourism destination. So where is Oman located? Oman is located in the southeastern coast of the Arabian Peninsula in Western Asia. And as you can see here in the photo, it is bordered by Yemen, Saudi Arabia, and also the UAE. So let's have a little bit more look into what Oman has to offer as a tourism destination. Oman is blessed to have different types of nature. It has the sea, the mountains, and it has the deserts. So it has a little bit of everything that you could possibly look for, um, whether you simply just want to relax or if you're looking um, to go do some hiking in the mountains, it has something for everything, everyone. Oman is a culture which is very rich in heritage, history and culture. Here in the PowerPoint, we can see Bahala Fort this became a World Heritage Site um, in 1987 and it's been beautifully restored. Here we have the ancient city of Kalhat, which is in Sur. It's, uh, it was an important um, port at sea um, in Oman. Oman is also very well known for its generous hospitality 
and warm and extremely friendly people. The Omani culture is found in all aspects of their daily life, from the clothes they wear, um, to the food they eat, um, to even the way um, they welcome visitors and, and guests um, to the country and, and to their home. You know, here we have um, a very famous, here we have the Arabic coffee known as kahwa and, and dates. And this is something which um, they love to offer their, ga- their guests and, and visitors on arrival. Frankincense here is also an important part of Oman's culture and heritage. It is, a clo- it is closely associated with the history of Oman. In fact, Oman is very famous for the production of um, frankincense. Um, and locally in Oman, it is called Luban, and it is burned in almost every single household, if not all households. Imagine a country full of history, wildlife, and traditions. Oman's natural beauty comes from the warm-hearted people who live and care for their country. For me as a photographer, I love Oman because the people are so nice and friendly. People like to see the people coming a lot. The local markets offer a wide variety of fresh fruits and vegetables, all grown and harvested by the locals. Open your eyes to the authentic Nizwa livestock market. Here you can observe the cattle auctions in their original atmosphere. Entering Matra Market, you will be dazzled by the treasures of local antique shops. And how the people live with the nature. Go visit a Bedouin household to feel the taste of traditional lifestyle. Cross the desert sands and find your oasis. they find a way to live especially in the Hajar mountains to live there and how they find a way to bring water everywhere. Locals still distribute water with traditional techniques using filar systems. Five of them are registered by UNESCO heritage sites. Oman is very unique in wildlife. We are working on saving cattle. The nature here is really so gorgeous. Sultan of Oman is amazed by the many beautiful places in the And this is why Oman is really special for me. I'm Andy Schultz, a photographer from Munich, Germany, and I really love Oman. So Oman offers some fantastic um, attractions, whether man-made or natural. Here we have Wadi Shab, which is located in Al-Sharkiya region. It's a great place for hiking. It's filled with warm blue pools and a stunning waterfall. Here we have um, the famous Jabal Shams, which is the highest mountain in the Hajar mountain range here in Oman. It is... um, actually known as the Grand Canyon of of Arabia. Um, It's famous for its hiking routes, 
um, camping, if you want to do some night photography, and even doing some off-roading. Here we've got the Royal Opera House, which is located in Muscat. Um, it showcases different performances from, from different countries, from around the world, and also within Oman, from ballet to operas to, to musicals and, and so much more. We also have, amongst many of the famous attractions here in Oman, is uh, Nizwa Fort. Also, it's the oldest fort in Oman, and it's actually one of the most visited places in the Sultanates. It really demonstrates the manner and, and the way in which people used and um, people lived in ancient times. We've also got the Wahiba Sands here, which is also known as Sharkia Sands. It stretches over um, a large area across the Sultanate where you can do dune bashing, camel riding, quad biking, um, camp camping, uh, camping and, and so many much more things as well. We've got the Sultan Qaboos Grand Mosque as well here, which is also located in Muscat. Um, it's one of the most beautiful mosques in the world. It's got the world's um, largest chandelier and it's, it's got the second largest single piece of carpet um, in the world as well. And inside it's absolutely got fantastic decor. We've got Russell Hat here, also known as uh, Turtle Beach. Um, here is where we have a turtle reserve, um, Russell Gin's reserve actually, and they are trying their best to protect these turtles um, in their natural environment. People who visit can go and see these turtles um, lay eggs. Um, the reserve aims to really promote and encourage social responsibility. We've got Musandam also, which is located in the north of Oman. Um, People can go sailing there, snorkeling, paragliding, um, as well as hiking. Um, we've got the Dofa Governorate, Salala, which is in the Dofa Governorate. It's famous for its seasonal weather, it's, um, which is known as the Karif season or monsoon. Um, it's, it's a period really where so many um, visitors come to Salala from either within Oman and, and also from uh, outside of Oman, especially in the neighboring um, region, the neighboring countries in the region between July and September. And during this time, you'll find um, Salala Festival also taking part there. Uh, Oman is filled with beautiful beaches. And when you come here, you have such a wide variety of beaches that you can choose from, whether you're looking for um, a sandy beach, whether you're looking for um, rocky coasts, um, bays, islands, lagoons. There's just simply um, so much available for your different interests. Accommodation. Oman is filled with um, lots of beautiful um, hotels and, and resorts. Here we have Anantara resort in Jabal Akhtar. Um, we have Jabal Alila also. Um, we have the Shangri-La hotels and resorts. We've got the Al Bustan, um, which is also a Ritz-Carlton hotel. Um, all these um, hotels provide a variety of services and facilities at the highest standard possible. As I said before, um, Oman has everything that you could ever possibly imagine. It's got everything for a very successful tourism destination. Um, because we have the three elements, sea, um, mountains and, and deserts, you have so many options in terms of activities. And, and this is just to name some of them, dolphin watching, snorkeling, diving, trekking, hiking, camping, climbing, uh, caving, turtle watching, boating, whale watching horse riding, and these are just some of them.
Okay, all right, so MICE Tourism. Oman is also a perfect destination for MICE Tourism. We have the new um, exhibition um, con and convention center here in Oman. And Oman also has many different venues within the country and different hotels, which have an array of facilities um, for people to use. Um, for meetings, for conferences, um, for conventions and exhibitions. Um, and Oman, is this a perfect place for you to have your meeting in because it has everything to meet different interests. So if you come to Oman for a meeting or for a conference or for an exhibition and so on, you know, if you're a nature lover, you'll find plenty of nature. If you, if you love um, high terrain, you'll find plenty of that too. And even if you're an adventure seeker, you know, there's something for everyone. Here we have some of the OTC students um, engaging in um, cultural exchanges in different um, destinations around the world. So looking at um, the first, sorry, the first photo, we have um, the students in Sri Lanka. Um, here we have in Japan and also in Korea. So the students from Otum Oman Tourism College visited these destinations and they um, shared the culture of Oman with the students there. And the students there also um, shared um, their culture with the students from the college. And, you know, it's a great way for the students to get really um, engaged um, with the industry. So the Omani, Oman 2040 um, strategy or vision, should we say. Okay, so um, the Oman 2040 vision was developed in line with the royal directives of his, with the late His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Said. The vision 2040 is a guide and a key reference 
for planning activities for the next two decades. And it actually um, is focused on four pillars. Um, people in society, economy and development, government institutional, and the environment and national. So people in society, so this sort of looks at things like um, upholding the Omani identity, um, uh, enhancing family and community health and well-being, um, developing um, entrepreneurial capabilities and so on. Economy and development, this is like building world-class infrastructure, development of um, equal development of the governorates around the country, as well as preserving the environment and sustainability. Um, government and institutional, here we have a look at the improving the government's effectiveness and so on, and also environmental and national, focusing on preserving sustainability and adapting a green um, economy approach. So this is a, a Oman 2040 vision. We also have the Oman 2040 tourism strategy. Um, the Ministry of uh, Tourism in Oman uh, aims to attract more than 5 million international guests by 2040 actually, and this includes same day visitors as well as um, domestic uh, tourists within the country. and. You know, they really plan to make tourism one of the main um, generators or, or sources of income in the future. And, you know, the Ministry of Tourism Oman has stated that they have a growth strategy um, to enhance the tourism sector. And this is by offering different tourism experiences in different areas of Oman. Um, and this is where they will highlight the local culture and heritage. You know, um, tourism infrastructure is being developed and enhanced. They've got the new um, Muscat Tourism International Airport, which will accommodate up to 48 million passengers, um, a variety of um, beautiful hotels and, and resorts. And Oman definitely has the components um, of a successful tourism destination. COVID-19, of course, has put, you know, tourism to a standstill, almost a standstill internationally, globally, and of course within the country as as well. There's been a huge fall, according to UNWTO, of international tourism demand. People are afraid, um, of course, people can't travel because of um, COVID-19. And of course, different countries have got different um, travel um, restrictions in, in place. Um, here in Oman, it has been a great focus on domestic tourism and, and staycations. Um, as I've mentioned before, Oman has so much to offer as a tourism destination. And um, this is a chance for people living in Oman to really travel around the country and see what Oman really has um, to offer uh, tourism. And, you know, the government has been really encouraging people to embark on domestic tourism in order to prevent the collapse of um, the local tourism and hospitality industry. So if you're planning to um, come to Oman um, and when you're managing your, your travel um, and, your, and your tourism trips, Oman has a variety of tour operators. Um, and um, there's, there's so many actually here, and these are just some of them. Um, and who will who you can contact, and they will create um, your tour based on your interests. Um, and Oman is really easy to get to because of the location of the Sultanate. It makes it easy to travel here by land, by sea, by air. We have several airports lo located throughout the country. Oman Air is the um, is the national airline, and of course there are many other international airlines that operate daily to the Sultanate of Oman. Um, sea travel is also becoming very popular um, um, by cruise ships. Also, we do have the port here where um, prior to COVID, of course, um, there used to be many people coming to Oman via cruise ship. Um, one other thing I'd like to mention is you know, um, in order to boost tourism here in Oman, it's been decided to allow um, travelers from uh, 103 countries to, to spend 14 days in Oman without a pre-booked visa. So, um, you know, 
I hope this is an opportunity for you to book um, an opportunity for you to travel um, in the future. Oman is open. This is what we have been waiting for with patience, hope and faith. The Omani way. And we are happy to tell you that Oman is open for our visitors, our tourists and we are open to opportunities for business. Yes, we are open to a bright future. Open for happiness. Open for craziness. And Omani hospitality is open and affordable to all. From luxury hotels to a tent. Open to the unforgettable experience of camping in the desert, where the silence is deafening and the stars are the brightest. Open to enjoy the incredible outdoors and the magic of Musandam. Open for the stunning beauty of Salala. Are you open to savor the unique flavor of Oman? You get it? I think you do. Okay, so thank you so much to, for listening to my presentation today. And we look forward to hopefully seeing you in Oman soon. Thank you. Take care. Bye. So there are guys again, thank you very much to um, Dr. Bianca Zalomis from Oman Tourism College who has just presented travel and tourism management and of course focusing on how beautiful Oman is. And again, um, we would like to um, say thank you again to the International Organization of Researchers, Inventors and Extension List for having this um, first session in the morning for our virtual talk series, 21st Century Tourism Reflection of 2021. And again, we want to say thank you to the Ayuri officers, Dr. Gabriel C. de la Yarte. Also, thank you to the president of Ayuri. We have Dr. Romy Moralista and the vice president, Dr. Joy de la Cruz. Again, to um, those who want to get their certificates, all you have to do is you can probably um, pay through the GCash of Dr. Romy B. Moralista. That's 945 506 nine two six zero and again we're inviting you guys to um, subscribe to our youtube channel that's a yori learning center again to our participants who want to get the certificate for this uh, two-day virtual talk series again certificates will be ready for you so all you have to do is just uh, get in touch with um of course a yori and then you can pay through our the GCash of Dr. Rome B. Moralista again, that's 0945 506 9260. Later in the afternoon, we're going to have uh, another speaker who are going to uh, talk about the new pedagogy in the new normal, still from Oman Tourism College. And of course, tomorrow, We'll be having another speaker who's going to enlighten us more about um, special lectures on tourism. So we have um, invited really um, international speakers who will be enlightening all of us uh, regarding the topic on um, 21st century tourism and reflection for 2021. Welcome to Guimaras, the island of mangoes and more. Guimaras is an island province located in western Visayas. It is made up of five municipalities, namely Hordan, the gateway and main growth center. Buena Vista, which serves as the center for higher education. 
Nueva Valencia, the tourism capital. Sibunag and San Lorenzo, which are centered on agriculture and fisheries. Considered as the agri-eco-tourism capital in the region, the province economic picture sustained its upward direction giving importance to our major economic drivers, agriculture, fishery, and tourism. The province still has the green, raw land for ecotourism development and agricultural production, anchored on the principles of integrated coastal management and the presence of areas with high aesthetic value that can be developed into high-end residential areas. Guimaras is also the transshipment hub and seaport province that links Panay and Negros and is considered as a metro residential suburb providing low-cost and high-end facilities. Investment in the province boomed on 2013 when 27 wind turbines that generate 54 megawatts were installed. Guimaras completed the paving of circumferential roads and upgraded the cross-island links, the development of ports and wharves, as well as the development of the 71-kilometer agri-tourism circuit. The province has also received awards and recognition for good governance, especially in the aspects of peace and order, ease of doing business, and environmentally sustainable development. It has significantly improved its competitiveness in terms of economic dynamism, government efficiency, infrastructure, and resiliency, making Guimaras the most competitive province in Western Visayas. Guimaras is mangoes and more. Get a share of more. Invest in Guimaras. We're going to be back at one o'clock, so hope to see you again, all participants. We're going to have another enlightening Saturday afternoon as we present to you our next speaker, who happens to be also from Alma and Tourism College. Again, enjoy the rest of the day, enjoy your lunch first, and see you back at one o'clock. Happy morning.
do here is go back 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 Thank <laughs> you. 